Hey there mudroomers, it's Carmen here with Mako and we wanted to pop in and make a little bit of a video about one of the new glazes from our 2021 stoneware glaze release. Here we have Himalayan salt. So just to go over some basic label information that you can find on the label, we've got our recommended firing range which keep in mind this tile here was fired to cone six on a white clay body. So anything varying from cone five in between cone 10, it can be a little bit different than this clay, than this sample here. So definitely check our website. We've got sample tiles at cone 10. And then over here on the label, we have our cone six and cone 10 reduction results right there. So you can read a description there. And then over here on the label, we have our ACMI AP certification, which that is good to go. Our dinnerware safe recommendation, this glaze, along with the other four glazes, similar glazes from this release, we do not recommend for dinnerware due to surface durability. So anything that's coming into contact with food does run a risk of the high acidic sur material highly acidic foods degrading the surface. So definitely don't put this anywhere that's directly coming into contact with food, perhaps on the outside of a wear or just on a decorative piece would be preferred for this particular product. And here we have our lot number, which you'll use to submit any technical requests. Then, like I said before, we've got our results, application instructions, suggestions and tips, and safety info. So that's a little review of our label. I did do a more in-depth review for our rainforest color as well as azurite. So if you want a little bit more details on our new label design, feel free to check those videos out. So to go into the glaze itself, so this glaze actually can produce a lot of variation and performance. This tile really showcases the variety of performance characteristics really, really well. We've got this really nice pink modeling, this buildup of this orange kind of rutile color, this beautiful gloss, and this nice matte finish. So all of these are options for an outcome when you use this glaze and not necessarily looking exactly like this. Sometimes you can have more pink. Sometimes you can have more orange. Sometimes it'll be mo mostly white or um, the buildup of the gloss is pretty consistent. But for the most part, the amount of orange and pink that showcases in the glaze will vary depending on your hand, your firing environment, and different things like that. So this is actually showcased really well in these sample tiles that I have here. So we'll go through those. Here we have our cone six results. So we've got one, two, and three coats. This particular sample does have a heavy buildup of the pink color. It Sometimes we get a little bit more orange. Sometimes we get a little bit more pink. Sometimes we get a nice modeling kind of in between those. So definitely be sure to do some testing to make sure you know what the outcome will be in your process. So we've got one, two, and three coats. As you can see, the buildup of the color is more with three coats. It breaks great over texture. And then when it starts to pool, that's when you see some of that orange buildup here. So you can kind of anticipate that. It's a nice smooth finish. This one, like I said, is a little bit more pink with the three coats. And then here we've got our cone five comparison. So it's kind of funny, the cone five turned out a little bit more orange than the cone six, but it still has a really kind of similar color performance when it comes to kind of the color saturation and the buildup. So even though this is a little bit more orange, it kind of performs similar to this breaking over the texture, showcasing kind of a matte clear. And then this one doesn't have any buildup at the bottom. It's a bit drier of a finish than this one is because it has less heat work. So our matte glazes kind of tend to do that. So here we've got three coats, a little bit more orange, a little bit more pink.
so those are kind of our typical cone five and six firings on a white clay body here we have it showcased with flux this is a gorgeous sample here here i have flux underneath the himalayan salt so we applied two coats of flux about to here and then three coats of himalayan salt anticipating this mobility that would happen so i only did i did recede my coats so only one coat to here second coat to about here and third coat to about here and it, it did fill it in pretty well we do have a little bit of bareness at the bottom because but i do kind of like how that breaks over there so we've got a little bit of gloss this this texture kind of had our dark flux go over into the light flux area a little bit but where they meet up is actually really really pretty so that's kind of what it looks like with flux under the himalayan salt here we have flux over himalayan salt again receding the coats light flux and dark flux I love how the mobility of the light flux kind of pulls that pink down to the bottom. It's a nice gradient. And then you have that orange buildup around the edge. So we did get a little bit of gloss here. Um, but again, most of the gloss is going to happen in the pooling areas or if you do apply it very heavily. And so next we'll go through our cone 10 reduction results. So we actually had a lot of variation with our cone 10 reduction results as well. Here is our most recent test, which showcases orange. This is kind of like a combination of all of our other tests. So I kind of, I kind of want to go through. I have three different samples to showcase here. So one, two, and three. I don't know if I can get all of them in at the same time. Yeah. So this glaze is really cool in all situations at Cone 10, but. You definitely want to do some testing. This has a pretty heavy reduction. You can kind of see in the body. So perhaps a really heavy reduction turns it more orange. We love, well, this is my personal favorite, I guess, this gray and white with that purple pooling. If this was a little bit heavier, we could get some really nice definition of the purple pooling and the texture. And then this is gorgeous as well with that beautiful yellow and still some of that gray breaking through and you even have some of the gray breaking through on this one so definitely i love that at cone 10 those that gray color kind of comes through it looks really really nice and it's a really surprising result coming from a glaze that is tip like a clear and pink so we were really excited when we did our tests with the cone 10. Here we'll go through the cone 10 with a little bit of flux. So this is that one that turned out a little bit orange. So this is going to showcase orange, a little bit more orange in these results. So we've got our light flux over our Himalayan salt and our dark flux over our Himalayan salt. And this one produced a really, really nice gradient going from this kind of gray blue to this beautiful, warm, kind of burnt orange color. I really like that. And then next we'll showcase it on a variety of clay bodies. Here we have it on the white speckled clay. This one we fired with a slow cool to cone six, just like with our azurite and rainforest, as well as our landslide actually, all four of those have very similar performance characteristics. So they will all kind of perform very similar on the different clay bodies as well as during all of our other tests. So this, we did do this with a hold and to prevent pinholing, we found that doing a cone six firing with a slow cool had the most success. So here we have it on a brown speckled clay body, just like those other ones. We do get a decent amount of pinholing here. We're working on finding a process that works well with the brown speckled clay. So stay tuned for that. And here we have the dark brown clay. This one kind of show, shows up a little bit better than the other four in this line. We do have a little bit more color contrast, a nice smooth finish. 
I do like this one on the dark brown clay. This is fired to cone six with a slow cool. Again, preventing those pinholes. That's what we had the most success if we had any pinholing on different clay bodies was the slow cool rather than the hold. I know we typically recommend a hold for using alternative clay bodies from the white stoneware that we typically showcase on. But for these ones, uh, slow cool seemed to work the best. So then we can go through a couple different combinations. So here is our big guy showcasing on a little bit more vertical of a clay body. These are drips that we use for Ensika. Um, so this is Himalayan salt over, um, or actually it's muddy waters over Himalayan salt. So we put two coats of Himalayan salt first, two coats of muddy waters, and then fired this to cone six. You can see the variety that showcases itself around the crystals, but this glaze will typically produce a lot of variation in and of itself. Well, I really like using this one in combination because it does tend to kind of develop these crystals a little bit more than the other three similarly formulated products. And then we want to go ahead and we'll just kind of go through a couple of these combinations. Like I've said previously, these are all fired flat. So we like to utilize these to kind of showcase what the color performance will be. But we do always keep in mind that the performance will be a lot different on a vertical surface. So this kind of just gives us a color idea to move off from to do our combo cups. So here we have Himalayan salt over copper float. over speckled plum. Cordovan. Himalayan salt over blue hydrangea. These colors really complement each other really nicely with that beautiful soft pink and that nice uh, chambray base. Uh, Himalayan salt over abalone. We love these two pinks together. It kind of makes it a little bit more saturated with this beautiful matte still. Here we have Himalayan salt over Norris blue. I love how that brings out a nice lavender color in here. These colors really complement one another really well. Over green opal. over dark green gloss. And then our last little pile here, I love this with Galaxy. I think that the orange showcase it, that showcases itself with this glaze really kind of almost exactly matches that one that kind of comes out of these crystals with galaxy so this really is a nice complement these are nice complements to one another we have himalayan salt over aurora green love this nice teal that happens as well as the contrast with these matte crystal kind of blooms that remain here so this i would expect to move down a lot and showcase a lot more of this green color and here we have it over indigo rain. These purples match up really well. It kind of brings out this beautiful lavender in the Himalayan salt up there, probably from these purple crystals. And then here we have it with olivine, which I really love. It produces a lot of variety in color. We've got this nice blue, dark green. We got micro crystals of element, this matte, a lot going on. I would really be curious to see what this looks like vertical. And actually I think you can because we already have our combo sheets made for Himalayan salt. That's the combo glaze for this month. We're featuring the Himalayan salt. It should already be on our website. So definitely check out our searchable combo glaze gallery. You'll see the individual combos there as well as we have downloadable and printable PDF sheets showcasing these combos at cone 6 and cone 10. So I think that is all that I have for you with Himalayan salt. 
Thanks so much for tuning in today, guys. Please drop any questions or suggestions that you have in the comments below. Anything that we can do to help you guys better understand our products and utilize them in your process is always well received. So thanks so much for your time and always be sure to check out our website and uh, utilize that as a great resource. So thanks again, guys. And as always, make it Mako.